Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard where we teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, War Games 18xx. I'm your host, Edward Euler, joined by a couple of very good friends of mine. Ariel. And Martin. All right. We are bringing y'all the final playthrough of the decade. It sounds really <laughs> ominous. <laughs> <laughs> or just going on hiatus until the new camera gets here. We should be uh, wearing Christmas party hats and things, I guess. We are, implied. Or if okay. you had like a snap filter, you could be. Oh. Anyway, yeah, hey. Uh, tonight we are bringing y'all Key Market 2nd Edition, designed by David Brain and developed by Richard Breeze for the Key series, and that is Key Market, uh, published by R&D Games, which is Richard Breeze's in-house company as well. So welcome everybody watching live around the world as well as after the fact. And Merry Christmas to everybody. We're doing this on December 23rd. So hopefully everyone's having a great holiday season. A bit, uh, before we get started, a huge thank you to all 802 patrons who helped make all of this possible and have well, we've reached the latest milestone to where we get a new camera, so that'll be unveiled at the beginning of next year. A uh, special shout out to Dennis Zerwas to say thanks for choosing to support the show and upping, upping your support tonight. So thank you very much, Dennis. Really appreciate it. Also, if you guys enjoy what, cheers, I like that. <laughs> uh, if you guys enjoy the content that we have here at Heavy Cardboard, don't forget to like and subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> Like and subscribe. Hit a thumb. Uh, hit the subscription. Don't forget to hit the bell. You get notified whenever we go live. And if you want to support the show like the 802 folks out there that choose to do so, you can go to pledgehc.com. Support the show there. So key market. Uh, for the longest time, it was 200 bucks to get a copy because it was way, way, way out of print. Uh, 500 of us apparently out there convinced Richard that there was enough interest in this game to create a second edition and I played a very small part in that and I'm excited that well I now have a copy of Key Market but also to be able to bring it to y'all but also to be able to so you guys can play what I think is a really fantastic uh, Richard Breeze designed or eh, Richard Breeze develop game designed by David Brain. I screw that up every time, because it's a key series. Yeah, and you this, just yeah. assume they're all done by Richard Breeze. Right, because right. the key series is Richard's <laughs> yeah. thing, right? Yeah. But no, this is the one of the bunch that he did not design, just played a big part in the development. Um, if you are familiar with the first edition, uh, the differences between the first edition, second edition, component upgrades, um, four new guilds have been added, I'm not sure which ones, to be honest, and all of the guilds have been tweaked or adjusted in some form or fashion to where previous strategies won't necessarily work with the new edition. Other than that, it's going to seem very, very familiar if you're familiar with the uh, first edition. That said, I'm going to go ahead and bring the cameras down and chat down for the teach, um, and then we'll uh, we'll get started. So if y'all are ready, and hopefully y'all are ready, we will get started with Key Market. All right, so welcome to Keedom, y'all, to where over the course of two years, we're going to try and organize our team or our, our workers out here in an attempt to turn their initial scanty resources into a thriving economic system. All right, so what is it you guys are looking at here? Well, first off, up there on the top left, we have the market board over, as Ariel is pointing out. Down below that, we have the seasons board as well. Then over here we have the county boards, or I'm sorry, the country boards for being out working the fields in the country. Then we have some not randomly chosen guild tiles. As you can see, these are the number of the country boards and number of guild tiles is going to be dependent on the number of players. We obviously are three players tonight, even though I realize that it says four down and below. I will fix that later. <laughs> but nonetheless, there you go. That's the number of tiles that we have out there. We have the small country board or the, the favored worker or favored uh, player track as well. Then up above, we have all of the different resources as well. So they are, and we'll go through these in order. We have fruit, we have wheat, vegetables, we have sheep, fish, and luxury tokens, which this is the first time and not the last that I will stress. Luxury tokens are not resources resources are not luxury tokens. Those are the one oddball in this game, so I need everybody to be aware of that. 
And these luxury tokens just really do look like crafts of wine, don't they? they that's exactly what I think they were intending to be, and uh, it works because purple yeah. and yeah. it looks like a carafe of wine. Then within everybody's player uh, area or player tableau, everybody has their farmhouse, which on the other side of this is the manor house as it gets upgraded, as you can see. These were randomly... Uh, uh, just doled out between us. They are a little bit asymmetric as far as the upgrading uh, the farmhouse to the manor house goes. Then behind our player screens you'll see that everybody starts with three, four, or five money or gold. I'll use those uh, terms interchangeably. Gold in this game or money in this game are victory points. Victory points are gold, so keep that in mind as we go along. Then everybody also starts with one of each resource. They do not start with a luxury item, as you can see. And the number of amount of gold that every player starts with is either three, four, or five, depending on player order. And we will randomize this as we go, but as it is right now, that's where we have it. So that's everything that you are looking at uh, over here. And I should point out that there are season markers up here as well um, over there on the seasons board, but we'll get into that as we go along. The last thing that I want to point out is you can either use the meeples or, I'm sorry, keeples as they come with the game, or there are little wooden discs that each player has that are double-sided that look like this and on the other side look like that. But we chose, you know what? We have the wooden bits. Let's use the wooden bits. All right. So big picture, what is it that we're going to be doing? Well, on our turn, we're going to be placing out here, hopefully, some amount of workers to gather up resources, as well as placing workers out here into the various guilds, all in the hopes of being able to acquire money. We will be selling as well as buying resources from the market, uh, harvesting various resources from out here on the board, all in the hopes of gaining some amount of money and potentially retiring our workers out here on the manor house to be able to gain more money because again, money is points, points is money, so whoever has the most money at the end of the game will win. So how do you actually play Key Market? Well, the game is broken up into two separate years with each year having four seasons Winter, spring, summer, and fall. I feel like this is a Mamas and Papas, or is it a uh, Mamas and Papas song? Um, anyway, I digress. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> it's a funnier joke if you don't have to try and figure it out yourself. So each year is broken up into the four seasons. Each season is broken up into the same three phases. You have the farming phase, the market day, and the end of season. The one thing that I do want to point out is... Over the course of the first year, you do everything. Over the course of the second year, you do everything except the end of season. At the end of autumn of the second year, you go straight into end of game scoring there. All right. So, how do you play the game? Well, as I said, two years, four seasons. There we go. Well, each season is broken up into the same three steps as you can see or phases a farming phase a market day phase and an end of season phase during the farming phase a player may do these things as they see as much or as little of those various steps that they wish to but they must do them in the order that they are printed out here okay so let's go over what all of those things will do i should point out that in the very first Winter in the first, essentially the first season of the game, only the first two steps are available. The other ones are not available, but we're going to cover most of them and then we'll double back on one of them a little bit later. So starting out with moving workers. It costs one gold per field and an additional five to settle in a village. Well, okay, let's go ahead and take a look out here. After we have initially set up our board out here, let's go ahead and cover uh, how movement works. So movement is one gold per space. So I have one worker out here, but for argument's sake, let's say I had another worker out here like so. 
Moving is always orthogonally adjacent, so either north and south, east and west, there's no diagonal movement, but there is some diagonal placement rules as we go along. So let's say I wanted to move from the fruit field out here or fruit area up here to the, the vegetable or the cabbage. That would be one, two, easy enough, boom, I would pay two gold from my supply back to the bank, boom, done, easy enough. In addition to that, I can then also go ahead and move, say, one, two. You can move all of your workers as many spaces as you have money available to be able to move them into specific areas. Now, before we go any further, I probably ought to break down what an area is. An area is all orthogonally adjacent connected fields of the same resource type. So you'll notice right here that there are three wheat spaces. Even though they are on separate country boards, it is still considered one area. There can only be one meeple or one worker, regardless of the player's color, in an area. So here you'll see the aerial has one worker in, these, in this area, which means that neither he nor Martin or I can place another worker in this area. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And you'll notice that there is a three sheep area over here. There is a one fruit, a two wheat, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. In addition to that, as far as when you move, when you finish your moving, you can move through things. So you'll notice that even though I am not allowed to have a worker in this area, I can freely move through an area. If I were, say, here, I could, if I had a lot of money, say, go one, two, three, four, and do something like that. So you can temporarily move through an area or where another player's worker is, or your own, as long as at the end of your movement, it is in a legal placement, okay? The last thing that I do want to go ahead and point out, and let's say that's there, if I chose to move this worker up here, at the end of all of my movement, none of my workers can be adjacent to one another. That includes diagonals. So in other words, with this would be an illegal placement. So either I could not move this guy here or I would have to move this somewhere else to where they are not even diagonally adjacent, even though they cannot move diagonally. Uh, yeah, move diagonally. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's moving workers, one gold to any of these spaces. However, the villages are the center point on all of the uh, country boards. In addition to the one movement, so let's say I chose to move from here to there. That is a one movement, and it's five additional gold to be able to move into a village. So it's prohibitively expensive, but you notice that there are luxury items there. That's going to be very, very important as the game progresses, all right? So in addition to the movement cost, it's five to enter a village. And by enter, I mean end your turn and camp there. Any questions on movement? No. Oh. All right. So moving on to the second step, which is hire one worker. I want to stress this. Hire one worker. So any given season, you can add one worker. I'm driving that point home because you're going to want to put out a lot of workers to be able to get a lot of resources. One. Okay, so hire one worker. It's one gold for each existing worker on the country boards. Well, what does that mean? How many workers do I have out on the country boards collectively? I have two, so it's going to cost me two gold to place one more worker, and I can place them anywhere following the normal placement rules. So I could not place him anywhere on this board because he's going to be adjacent to this worker. I could not place him on any of those three places because he'd be adjacent to that worker. In addition to that, I could not place him here because that is a area that is controlled by Martin and I could not place him in there because that's controlled by Ariel. So maybe I choose to place him up there, I would pay the two gold. It is the number of your workers total between all of the country boards. Any questions on hiring one new worker? No. Oh. All right, moving on. Produce resources and luxuries. Well, let's go ahead and cover that one. Each worker produces basic or season exception amounts of resources. Now, I'm going to use Ariel's example here for this area here. So Ariel, being the red worker here on a circle wheat, you'll notice that there is a circle wheat and there are square wheats. 
Let me go ahead and bring your attention over here to the market board. So you'll notice that we are in winter, but indulge me and let's say actually we're go ahead and we are over here in summer, okay? You'll notice that he is on a circle wheat. A circle wheat normally will produce, all circle tiles will produce one of that resource. So in theory, he would get one resource. It is not, it does not matter that he is, has an area of two square and a circle, it's wherever the worker is. So normally would get one wheat. However, because you'll notice that this tile shows that, oh, hey, circle wheat, he gets three, so he's in circle wheat, he gets three there. Easy enough. So these are piece limited based on player count. So the number of resources that are available are limited. So if you cannot take everything that you would normally be able to acquire, you get one gold for each thing that you cannot take. So for instance, there were only two wheat left, he would normally get three wheat, he would get two wheat and one gold. Easy enough? Okay. And you'll notice that here, that that is a circle luxury, that is a circle, so that would be a one, and let's say instead he were here, he would just get a base of two, but you'll notice that the squares, if it were, say, there, won't want, I would produce no fruit. But it's all of your workers produce all of their stuff as per the season that you are on. Does that make sense? I think that's pretty straightforward there, right? Yep. All right. The next uh, step is promote. We're just going to skip this and we'll double back to that after we talk about guilds. It'll make more sense then. So we'll skip the promote. Instead, we'll move to the upgrade the farmhouse. Well, everybody has a farmhouse, as you can see out here. To upgrade it to a manor house, okay, the cost is the leftmost resource plus one other, plus a luxury good. So you'll notice that I have one wheat, and then it's either one other basic resource of the other four types in addition to the wheat, and to upgrade it is also one luxury item. And you'll notice that all of us, it costs a luxury item. The asymmetry comes from what the first basic resource is, and then one other uh, resource of that type. Does that make sense? When you choose to upgrade it, you pay those resources from behind your player screen, you flip it over, and now when we get to retiring, you're able to retire any number of workers that you wish to do. Retiring means they are permanently removed from the game, either from the country board or out here in the guild, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Upgrading, it's going to be worth 15 points or 15 gold at the end of the game, plus additional uh, money for retired workers. Okay, any questions on upgrading your manor house? No. Nope. Moving on then to, re oh wait, retiring a worker, pay for resources. But there's an asterisk, and over here it says all resources must be different. Well, in addition to that, you may replace one luxury, replaces two resources. So, to be able to retire a worker, I have to pay four resources, and they all must be different. So it could be one, 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 and one, or it could be any two of those and one luxury. If I had a luxury, it replaces two of them. You cannot pay two luxury items to replace all four, however. When you do so, you choose one of your workers out here on a country board, or more unlikely, but possible, to be able to replace from a guild board, and you put them over here onto the retired board. They are permanently out of the game. They are locked there forever, but each one that's over here is worth 15 points or 15 bucks at the end of the game. You'll notice that it looks like there are three spots available. There are not. These are unlimited, so you can retire as many as you want, and they're going to be 15 points at the end of the game. So, assuming there's no questions on that, we have covered all of the steps for farming except for promoting. So how does this work? In player order, players are going to take their entire turn. So you're going to do whatever it is that you want to do of that list, and then when you're done, you're going to moving this back to where we are. So as it is, Ariel will do all of his stuff during the farming phase. When he says he's done, whoop, we'll move that over. Then it goes to Martin, he'll do all of his farming phase, whoop, done, and then I get to do mine. Then when all of the workers are there, then we get to move into the second phase of the round or of the season. 
The second phase is market day. All right, going to market day, there are two things that you can do. You either sell a batch of items or you take one of the five available guild actions. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the market day and choosing to sell first. The first thing that you have to do is you must choose a minimum of one resource in which to be able to sell. If you do not have any resources in which you can sell, you have to prove it. Now normally money and resources are hidden, as you guys can see, because we all have player screens. But if I had no resources, I would have to be, hey y'all, I have no resources. And the punishment for showing that I have no resources, obviously I do, but indulge me, is everybody also gets to see how much quiche I have here, which is never a good thing, as you might could imagine. Yes, hidden trackable, but I digress. So you choose a minimum of one item, a maximum of however many that you wish to be able to sell. You put them into your fist. We put them all out here. When we all have our fists out, we then reveal what they are. And all of those items, whatever they are, let's say I choose to sell those two there, I'll put them onto my market board or onto my farm board to show that, hey, these are the things that I am completely and utterly and totally committed to selling to the market. I cannot pass until everything is sold and I have taken my one allowable guild action in a given uh, market day phase. So you must sell all of your stuff and take one guild action. So, how is the process of actual selling work? When it's your turn, okay, you can sell a batch of goods to be able to sell to the market. A batch of goods is one or two of a certain type. A type being as you see on the market, so that's fruit, that's wheat, that's cabbage, that's etc., etc., okay? The price that you will get is the highest avail or highest visible legible number on that track. So indulge me and instead of all this, let's say I had done two wheat and a sheep. I say, hey, I'm going to sell my two wheat when it becomes my turn. So I sell these two wheat. I then say, hey, how much am I going to sell it for? I can see the number four. I sell them both out there. As you can see, the first one goes onto the market board. All additional uh. ones go into the supply like that. So I will have gotten eight gold from the supply and gotten rid of my two wheat. Right. Make sense? Yep. All right. So now, if either of the other two fellows want to sell wheat, they're going to sell it at a diminished cost. Okay? Then it becomes the next player's turn, etc., etc. They sell one batch. Now... If you have upgraded your farmhouse to a manor house, the advantage here when it comes to selling on market day is you can sell a batch of three items as opposed to a batch of two. Okay? All right. So that's selling to the market, and we will, you know, the market will, will be dynamic as we uh, sell and, uh, and buy, which we'll talk about buy here in a little bit. Any questions on the selling action to the market? No. Nope. All right. So again, on your turn, you either sell a batch or one of your actions may be to take a guild action. You are allowed to take one guild action once per round or once per phase, once per season during the market day. There we go. What are the various actions here? So we'll do these in order. So first off is sponsoring one apprentice. It, you pay two resources. Again, they must be different resources or could be one luxury in lieu of that. Sponsor one apprentice, you pay two resources and they must be different resources. So as it is, I cannot take from my farmhouse. I take from behind my screen. I say, hey, here are my two resources. Now, because I did not sell to the market, these instead would then go into the supply and then I take one of my workers and I then can have an apprentice out here on any of the uh, uh, apprentice spaces, which are the bottom of any of the seven, I'm sorry, I can't count, six guild tiles that are out there. If they are already occupied, so let's say 
for argument's sake, that that is already the case. I cannot place a worker if there are no spaces on the apprentice. I cannot sponsor a new worker. In addition to that, I cannot sponsor a second worker in the same guild. So in other words, you can have a maximum of one worker per player per guild, and you can only sponsor one if there is a space available. So if it were like something like this, only then could Ariel go ahead and sponsor and place out there. You'll notice that most of these spaces out here have numbers on them. In fact, I think they all do, except for these. That is the amount of victory points or gold they will be worth, depending on where they are at the end of the game. In addition to that, guilds convey certain bonuses or special rules. There are essentially two types of guilds in this game. Now, you'll notice that some of these have little scrolls on them that are very different from one another. So this is a different line. It is not in any way connected to that line, which is not connected to that line. Whereas this one over here, you'll notice that the scroll kind of has a little, little connection up to that one, connection up to that one. In addition to that, you'll notice that it has a little plus marker on it. The difference between these two types of guilds are when you have a worker on this level uh, as an apprentice here of this guild, he conveys what, or he, she, the, the keeple conveys whatever the special ability is on the space they are. When you promote them, which we'll talk about how to do that here in a little bit, you no longer get access to this one. Instead, you get access to that in lieu of that when you've promoted it. Whereas, over here in this guild where it is connected and it shows the little plus marker, you'll notice that here you get this. When you promote them, you get this in addition to this, and then when you promote them in addition to that. You'll notice that any of these kind of yellowish, tannish color right here convey a end of game scoring bonus as well, okay? Whereas some of these on the top level do not have an end, the, notice the color difference between, say, these. Mm. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. So connected is in addition to as they get promoted and separate here, they are separate action or separate bonuses. They do not uh, stack in that case. So getting back to this, sponsoring one apprentice, you pay two resources. Okay. And then you put a new worker out there. A worker can come from the country board or can come from your supply. Now you'll notice that one of our workers over here has a little K, the keeple, the, the key, whatever, the main dude here. The only reason that is a different worker in our case is because the guild of key workers is actually in play. If this guild was not here, ignore it, it's just a regular worker. But as it is, these convey certain special abilities specific to that one key worker. So you put a regular worker, and then when you do something with whatever that key worker, wherever they are, they will convey special uh, bonus for that one key worker, okay? So any questions on sponsoring? Nope. All right, next we go to promoting. One guild member, pay resources uh, up to a craftsman, it costs three resources, up to a master, which is the third level, pay four resources, and again, as always, one luxury item can supplant or replace two of the different resources. So, you'll see out here on the board, there are two little resource markers here, there are three, there are four, so to promote from here, it costs three. To promote to there, it costs four. You'll notice there is only one on most of these guilds up here for the master, whereas some this one has three spaces on it. Obviously, when it's occupied, it cannot be taken. They are worker placement spots in that regard. However, if for whatever reason this worker were to retire, if we have done like so and he retires, well, now it's available for somebody else to promote him. Easy enough. Moving on to the next one is retiring worm worker. Oh, how do you, well, there's the, there you go. Pay four resources. Again, they must be different or luxury item can replace two of them, etc., etc. Cannot replace all four with two luxury items though, okay? Retiring, as I just did. Moving it from there to there, boom, he's worth 15 points, was worth five points, but obviously I no longer get the bonus that was associated with that worker, all right? All right, moving on now. Buying, oh, this is the first time we've talked about actually being able to buy from the marketplace here. 
So being able to buy at the market one or two resources or luxuries from the same type from the market. So you'll notice out here that maybe I choose to buy wheat. I can buy one or two wheat. Put it back on there for a second. If I choose to purchase wheat, I can buy one or two and it is the highest space visible is the cost. So that would be three per, whereas for fruit, it would be four per. And you'll notice that it's six per for luxury, you would think. However, how many luxury are out on the market? Zero. Right, which means you cannot purchase luxury items because there are none available. Now, if somebody had sold some, you'd be able to, but you get the idea. The buy one or two of the same type for the price that's shown. So if I want two wheat, I would pay six bucks and I would take the two wheat as shown there. I would put them behind my screen, boom, done, easy enough. Any questions on that? Good, moving on. The last one is taking gold. You get five gold minus the salaries for each of your workers on the country boards. Hmm, well, how many workers do I have at on the country boards? One, two, five minus two, I get three bucks from the bank. What if, however, I actually had, uh, let's make these legal there and there. I have five workers out there. If I choose to take this action, I get zero money. However, you're only allowed and you must take one guild action per market day phase per season, right? You must. So if you don't want to do or cannot do any of those other things and you have five workers out there or more, you don't actually pay money. You just would get no money and hey, I took my guild action by not doing anything, right? Whenever you take your one allotted guild action, however, you then move your worker over to the right to signify, hey, I've taken my guild action. However, I cannot pass until all of the things have been sold from my farmhouse in addition to having taken my one guild action. Does that make sense? Yep. Any questions about when you're allowed to pass? When you pass, you're out for the rest of the season. You've already signified you've taken your guild action, which you must do, and boom, you're done. All right, so moving on then at that point to the end of season. So here we go. Adjust the market prices. Step one, well, how do you do that? Well, going back to our example, let's say, throw out another wheat if you would. All right, let's say the market were as such like you see there. You'll notice that up at the very top of the board, you'll notice that there are numbers that range from zero to negative one to negative two. That shows, depending on where the rightmost resource is, or luxury item because it's not a resource, then you remove that many. So you'll notice we remove no fruit and nothing from any of the others. However, however we remove one wheat there. Now. If we had sold, and if you would, go and throw out like five wheat here. Let's say we had sold a bunch of wheat. As we sell more and more wheat, they pile onto the number one space there. And so the price for wheat will never, or for any of these, will never go below one. But when we get to the adjust market prices, it shows that you remove two of them, so you literally remove two of them, boom, done, and the price still remains at one. Easy enough, makes sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, good. So then after that, remove the season markers in spring, summer, and fall of year one. So at the end of the first spring, we're going to remove these top two markers there, and then we will flip these over to, what, to be able to signify, hey, this is what's coming next spring. At the end of summer, we will do the same. At the end of fall, we will do the same, et cetera, et cetera. And that's going to be for harvest extras or less, depending on what it shows over there. Then pay or remove workers on country boards. Two bucks per worker. Well, I got five workers out there. That's 10 bucks. <laughs> Man. Well, you know what? I decide I don't need to double up on some stuff. I'm going to remove, I don't need fruit for whatever reason. Let's say I remove those two, they come back there, and now I, if I had six bucks, I only have four. So maybe I remove that one. 
there we go. And then I would pay my four bucks to be able to keep my two country workers out in the field. They got to get paid. Or you remove them from the board. Easy enough? Yep. Yep. Then, new player order. All right. So we haven't talked about the player order over here. The player order here is adjusted by whoever has the fewest workers out here on the country boards. So you'll notice that the fewest is tied by blue and by red. So then we look at the favor board. Who is most favored? Most favored, as it were, over here, most favored of the two that are tied is going to be blue. So in that case, blue will go first for the next, uh, next season. However, because they use their favor, if you will, they will drop down to the bottom, red will go second, yellow stays, and because red and yellow did not use their favor for breaking tiebreakers, they stay where they are on the favor track. That makes sense? Yep. All right. Then, rinse and repeat. Do it again for each season. Then, when you get to the end of the eighth season, or the end of the second autumn, you skip this end of season phase, and then we go into final scoring. So the end of scoring, what we're going to do, we're going to empty, uh, just wipe off everything that's on both of those boards. There's actually a scoring track on the back of both of those. We'll flip it over, and that will track our scores. What do you get points for? Well, if you've upgraded your manor house, you get 15 points. For every retired worker, you get 15 points. For every gold, well, a gold is a point, right? So that makes sense that you would get a point per gold. Then for each pair of resources or luxuries, pair meaning two sheep, two fruit, not a fruit and a sheep. No, it's two fruit makes a pair. You would get five points. Anything left over is just wasted, so odds of, the, of a certain type are not useful. Then guild members, the points are as they are on the guild tiles. So in this case, blue would get five. In theory, we would have more workers out here as you would go. And then anything on guilds numbers one, five, six, and seven, as it is, we have two of those that are in the game right there that have end game scoring. So if someone has made it up to there, they'll convey whatever the bonus scoring is for there. Whoever has the most points wins. And that, folks, is how you play Key Market. Any questions? Awesome. All right, cool. And uh, yeah. Well, there's one other quick thing, Edward, I don't think you mentioned. So sure. the other thing that you get to do when you take the gold action five minus however many workers, you also, that bumps you up to number one in this favor. Track. Good call, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And it, it actually is called out here on the, uh, in the three and four player game on the, uh, on the uh, player aid, so good catch on that. So, that said, um, thank you, Robert. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, for, I'll bring up chat and the cameras here. And there there was one question from Dragon saying, uh, is there any connection other than theme and art to key market? Uh, no, not really. It's the, the, and the only real connection is the artwork. Really, yep. and this general theme of key what's it, which right. and they're both awesome. <laughs> there we go. Giving away the end. <laughs> giving uh, giving away the final round, final round table right away. That's okay. all right. Yeah. yeah you yeah. ruin the whole suspense. I'm sorry. Of the thing I now. apologize. All right. Please. So I need I need my resources back. So I okay. need a wheat. I have a sheep, and I need uh, there's five. That's it. All right. So we will try and make this to where you guys can see everybody's resources and money, but we are going to need to shrink this down so that we cannot see each other's stuff. So there's that. There is no way any of us are going to be able to make that out. <laughs> so there we go. Um, we need to randomize turn order. Uh, Martin, did you bring your deck of cards? Indeed I did. Okay, so we will randomize turn order. We have two of each of those out, no luxuries out here. And then once we do all of that, then we are actually going to redo out all of the, the boards out there as well. So if you guys want to take your workers back. Ariel, go for it. And yes, welcome to the final uh, playthrough, not final live stream, because we're doing one on Christmas. And by we, I mean I am. Uh, uh, the Queen. Well, so there we go. So it. and we'll okay. go in that order. That worked out. So we're going to go first, second, and third, and then we have the exact opposite order for the beginning favor. And the only other thing that I need to look at is for placing the country boards. The last player shuffles the four large country boards and then gives one. So the last player. So that is me. So I will take this one, this one, 
that one, and there is another. And these are double-sided, so I'm going to shuffle these up. Okay, so then I give it to the first player, I believe, right? I think, that, I think that's right, yeah. Uh, yes, so he does not get to choose, so it's this. So he places this out here. And yes, we're there going go. to make sure that it's a two by one. Then he chooses one space to place his initial worker out there on the board. Hmm, I'll go right there. All right, and you cannot place in the village to begin with. And now Martin, we will choose that one for you. Thank you very much. And Just what I would have chosen for myself. Excellent. And I'm going to very carefully uh, decide where to place them. And you I can turn these got... to where they're sideways, etc. upside down. I have no clue what I'm doing on that front, so I'm not going to bother with any of that. And I'm going to place one out, like oh, we'll put the key one out. And there's Just mine. Case. Um, so now I have to make a decision. Is he going to explain his decision? That's the question. I explained you know mine. It was random. Mine is not going to be, and you'll notice that there's no harvests available, because uh, zero and zero here for the first year. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump in the fish market right now, and I will jump onto... Yeah, it's not nearly as good as I thought it was going to be. I would like it to be uh, maybe a cat. Oh, I lied. We're going to move this. There we go. So that blocks off that area now from Ariel as well. Um, oh, shoot, it's zero. I'm an idiot. Hold on. Take a mulligan on that one. Yeah. I was wondering what sort of master plan you had with that zero up there. How about we do this to where it's upside down and we do that for fruit? Hey, there. Finally figured it out. There we go. And it, it's that area, so it blocks it off for everybody. So this will be dead space, as it were. Uh, yeah, there we go. So then we need to go ahead and pay for our farmhouse. Okay, so now everybody has to choose whatever their main one is. So Ariel's going to choose a fish. I'm going to choose a wheat. And Martin has to choose a fruit. But in addition to that, we must choose one, one of those to secretly select, and this is going to seed the market to begin with. All right, so there, and then we place them out there in the market. So there's a bit of an asymmetric start to the market. There we go. And we now can begin. So, with that said, we start here. We are in the uh, the farming phase. So, Ariel, place your bets. Uh, over under, I'm going to say four and a half glory to Rome's. Ariel's here, so it should be a little <laughs> bit higher. Um, yeah, four and a half today, and place your bets on this. All right? Easy, Matt. Be nice. It's Christmas. So, welcome, everybody. Hey, y'all. All right, so I'm going to not move anybody. I'm happy with my initial placement. Then I'll hire a single worker for one gold. Because um, he one. has one worker out there, mm -hmm. and you have a bank right oh, there. Thank you. Um, now I produce nothing because it's winter. You can't promote, you can't upgrade, and you can't retire. You're done. That's it. Done. So he's done. Boop, done. There we go. Did you say you'd hire? Oh, yes, you'd have hired a worker, yeah. All right, so that. Martin, do you wish to move your worker? Good question. Now, I realized that having actually placed there, that I really should have actually placed my initial worker on one of those circular fruit spots to grab the fruit, but um, oh well. Life is full of missed opportunities. Yeah, but the good news is if you choose to do that for your guild action, at least it's cheaper. So that worked out. I would like to say you planned it that way, but... No, I did not plan it that way at all. So, do I stick with where I am? Do I want to move? Do I want to throw it? So the, the trade-off of, of the initial one from my one previous game was if you hire a worker, then that sets you up a little bit for when spring comes, but the problem is you have to pay extra for that worker. 
while on the other hand if you don't put one in there then you are not paying so much which is advantageous because you're not paying so much see really easy paul you make a good suggestion i'm happy to help you guys there you go hopefully that helps so the question is which way do i want to do it do i want to put the extra worker out and Thanks, uh, pay the extra money both for the um putting them out and also for um the uh paying the remote the uh, cost there I think I'm going to hold as I am, and I'm actually going to stick where I am, I think. I'm going to... All right, so you're not hiring, not moving, not yep. any of that. All right. Yep. Hmm. Done. All right, so I am not moving. I'm happy, eventually, to have finally gotten to a place of uh, where I feel, you know, good about my life decisions. Um, I am going to go ahead and hire a worker. So, again, here. So, I'm not moving. I'm happy with that. So, then... Yeah, because you can't afford... Oh, by the way, uh, Ariel, you started with three money, I and did. Martin, you started with four, right? Yep. You didn't have to change that. That worked out. So hiring, so I'm going to spend one gold to go ahead and put another worker out. And looking at this, well, the cabbage obviously is not going to be good right now. Fruit is not going to be good. Uh, square fruit is not going to be good later on. But wheat is going to be good. Round wheat. So you know what? I don't like that nearly as much as I like that one, I think. So I will there, go there, I will pay my one gold, boom, done, and done. So we move into now uh, market day, and market day, just as a quick reminder for everybody, is we all must put up something to sell and take one guild action before we can pass, okay? And yes, happy holidays. I shouldn't say Merry Christmas for all of y'all that don't celebrate. I mean, I'm not celebrating Christmas really this year either. I'm, yeah, so there's that. I'm hanging out with y'all on Christmas. Um, so looking at this, you know what? I'm probably going to need that there, but I'm going to go there. And do I want to sell multiple? I think I'm going to do that. No, I'm not going to. There we go. Oh, oh excellent. Felix says, just finished learning BIOS Origins. Live stream helped me a lot. Awesome. All right, so everyone must sell at least one. Okay, so they've done so. So they're going to put it, everyone puts it onto our board. And now, in turn order, Ariel has two choices, either sell a lot, a lot is his one cabbage, or take one of the available five guild actions. I will definitely sell. Yeah, I reckon mm. he will. He gets three bucks for that. And Mr. Fowler, you are in no rush to sell, so you no. could do your guild action. So I think I will do my guild action, and, and here I'm going to sponsor an op a apprentice. So that costs two different resources. Two okay. different resources. Whoops. And because you are not selling to the market, they go there. And I think I'm going to go for the key worker. Okay, like so now that. he doesn't have to pay for his key worker if he has his key... Uh, oh, there. So he doesn't have to pay for that. Anyone would have thought I would have that. Yeah, I, weird. All right. So that is your guild action. So okay. to signify that he's taken his guild action, cannot take any more guild actions this season. Hmm. Uh, well, I'm in no rush to sell, right? However, I was thinking of buying resources, and I think I will probably do that. But I'm going to go ahead and sell first. So I will sell the sheep for three. And I will go and turn in two and take a five. There we go. Done. Ariel, All right. you cannot sell. I cannot, but I can sponsor an apprentice. So I'll pay wheat and a fruit, and I'm going to start in the bank over here and get another five. Take five upon sponsorship. There we go. That was tempting. So, yeah, I guess we didn't go over these, should we? I mean, can you guys read these? Do you need us to go over? It might be worth going through them. Um, sure. All right, so we'll start off here. A guild of bankers. 
So uh, take five gold upon sponsorship, upgrading them, receive three whenever you receive resources, and then retire any workers for a cost of nine instead of four resources, or instead of 15. Um, no, instead of four resources. Instead of four resources. Four resources. Yeah. I, I don't know what I'm thinking. All right, because uh, it's worth 15 points mm -hmm. up there. Then the uh, Guild of Wheel Rights is set on a village for two instead of five. Nice. Then, and in addition to that, move up to six fields for free. Awesome. Fields, not areas. So that is spaces, remember, yeah. orthogonal movement. And then all pairs are plus three points at the end of the game. So instead of them being worth five, they're worth eight pairs of leftover resources. The Taskmasker's Guild, a new workers cost a max of two, regardless of how many workers you have out there. That, that's kind of good, right? Um, plus, repeat a higher action once. <gasps> oh, we can hire two. Hmm. And... In game scoring here, if you have uh, five different resources um, or five points for different resources, however, minus 25 points at the end of the game. Okay. Then uh, the key workers, well, we've already covered the bottom one. In addition to that, uh, the key worker may share an area, in addition, and the key worker produces plus two. So that's really nice. That really boosts that one worker, the key yeah. worker. Mm. There. The uh, Guild of Master Craftsmen trade one resource for a luxury upon sponsorship. Turn in one for a luxury. Pretty nice. Trade in one resource for one luxury when receiving resources each and every time. Oh my. And finally, trade up to two identical resources for luxuries when receiving resources. But notice that these do not stack. Okay. And finally, the Guild of Agriculture says one chosen of any of these three out here, there, that produces, it gets plus one. So you get one extra good on one thing. Then, separately, take one additional resource when receiving resources. Nice. And finally, uh, each chosen uh, thing that produces gets an extra one. And you'll notice that it has specific ones behind it. Okay. All right, so that said, uh, it's my turn. I feel like I kind of made a mistake on this, but that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and sell for two more bucks. But going to go in a different direction, obviously, than what everyone else is doing here. All right. And... Uh, I get to sell. And now we... Ariel? I, I pass. Right. He has done his guild action. He has nothing left to sell. He passes. I think technically I should have got to sell before you did. Don't that it made any difference, right? But well, no, because I didn't take my guild action yet. So that was I took that instead. Or did I take? It, it doesn't. It doesn't you matter. get the idea, right? It yeah. doesn't matter. All right. Anyway, so I sell my fish. I sell it for three, and I take free money. There you go, and you have it there. All right. Um, yes, I do. And finally, it. my guild action, which I have not taken, which I will take. Well, here momentarily. So what can we do? I don't have two resources, so I cannot sponsor, I cannot promote, I cannot retire. I could buy or I could take gold. So I would take a total of three gold or I can go ahead and buy resources. Well, or luxuries. And I cannot buy luxuries because there are none available. However, I will go ahead and I'm going to get fruit and I'm going to get wheat. So let's go ahead Do I buy two fish? Uh, a moment, let me see. Fish are cheaper. The sheep are cheaper. But you know what? Let's go ahead and pay two bucks and go and get two cabbage. So, there we go. All right. And so that was that. And now we go to end of season. End of season. Adjust the market. So the market says remove one, one, one. Those all go away. And none of the others. Okay. Then remove the season markers for that season and flip them up. So well, this goes away. That's right. Oh, sorry. Thank you. There's nothing to remove. And then pay your upkeep for your workers. Two bucks per worker. Well, none in my case. Because he doesn't have to pay for his key worker. I will pay four as well. Mm. 
No, we're going to. Yeah. And then new player order. So who has the fewest workers? Blue does. Blue will go. Then from the next two players, red and yellow. Well, yellow has to use his favor. And we begin a new season. Boom, there, there you go. That's how you play Key Market, y'all. All right? So, now I have my move and what's it. Now I can't go any on any of the circular flutes because I was foolish and didn't grab a circular flute earlier on. I can think about a circular wheat ready for next time. So first off, do you want to move your worker? Well, if I'm gonna put, oh, if I'm gonna put a worker out, I want to think about where I'm gonna sure. Makes sense. put that first. Now I, well, I will be able to share an area. Now sharing an area means I can be adjacent to in the diagonal form, or is it just I can share an area? No, you like cannot that? share an area. Period. No, if I go up on this. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? We'll have to read that. Read up. Oh, all the guilds are in here, so that is guild number four. Uh, the key worker can be placed in or moved into an area that is occupied by another worker. If that uh, worker is the player's own worker, the non-adjacent C rule must still be complied oh, with. Right. Okay. So is that. However, yeah. you can't have two workers in the same specific field, but they can share an area if you move up there. There you right. go. Okie doke. I haven't got much money to play with here. Hmm. All the produce is about the same. Oof. So what are you thinking? So I'm, I, I'm attracted to the idea that I could just about spend all of my money to put the key worker right into the luxury goods area. Luxury goods are quite nice because, of course, they get a lot of money. Um, and so that would be a good thing. And, of course, luxury goods are flexible. But then that would be the only good I produce. or just produce a single luxury good, which I would have to sell, which would be good for money-wise. But it would be bad that I'd have no other goods. And that would mean it's impossible for me to get onto any of the other tracks. And there's the rub. Which well, would well, be really awkward. Yep. So the other plan would be, I put a new worker out, that's going to cost me one, which means I can no longer do this um, routine anyway, and would need um, money anyway, but that's another matter. And then where do I plot myself? Well, I mean, I'm going to get one, um, I'm gonna, well, I'm going to get two wheat, no, I'm trying to remember this. So this oh, is so two square, of you will get two wheat, correct. Oh, so that applies, yes, it applies to all. So I get two wheat for being on the square, which is good. So I could perhaps go somewhere like here, um, pick up my, maybe a couple of fruit or something, or it doesn't really matter because they're all exactly the same. So then I'd have four things to sell. Not there, because... Right. So here, if this helps, do this. Yep. Mm. Um, so then I'd have four resources to sell. The prices are going to be tricky, but I'm going to get some money for them. I won't get as much as I would do for the total thing, but I would at least be able to do a bit of selling resources and be able to get another guild in. I think it's more useful for me to get another guild in than it is to try and do something fancy with that. So as a result, I am going to pay my one and plop him down. Square fruit gets you two fruit. Yep. Square fruit, and that's nicely positioned both for there and for here which I think is uh, where I want to be. So that will cost me one to hire. And do I want to move? I'm kind of tempted to move so that I'm closer to, the, to, to going in there should I wish to go in there. Ariel will compete with me on that front. Do I want to pay the one on the off chance? No, I don't think so because I think I can always pay it later on. I don't think I'm going to be further disadvantaged going in there. So I'm going to hold it at that. All right, so produce. Well, then produce. So I produce two fruities, fruit, and two wheaties. And I may choose to promote now or wait to the... Um, to later. To later. Remember, it's promote but not sponsor, meaning you can't put more dudes out here, but you can upgrade them. 
The trouble is, if I upgrade them, then um, that would be nice, but the extra key worker advantage here isn't huge. This one's rather nice, producing plus two, but this one I'm not super keen on at the moment. Weird so how that I'm happens, gonna, huh? <laughs> yep, so I'm not going to bother promoting. Um, I'm not going to upgrade my farmhouse, and I'm not going to retire a worker. So I'm just me done. All right, so I'm up. So moving workers, I'm pretty happy with where they're at. Uh, I will go ahead and pay two bucks to go ahead and put out one more worker. I have one, two workers, hence why it costs that. Um, looking at what I'm going to get, I'm going to get three fruit. I'm going to get uh, one wheat. And I'm thinking maybe some sheeples. So sheep are good. So I'm thinking square sheep. Do we have square sheep? We uh, Right there, that doesn't work for me, but square sheep there does work. Boom. So, not, uh, so we've hired, now I'm producing. So that's going to be two sheep, please. That's going to be three fruits and one wheat. That's pretty good production, I think. Yeah. That, that seems like a good haul. Yep. I mean, that may come to an abrupt end here when we get there... Uh, towards the end of the round, but that's okay. Now, um, I cannot promote a guild member. I have no guilds out there. Then, upgrade farmhouse. I don't have the luxury goods, so not going to do that, and I'm not going to pay for resources to retire a worker, because I can't, because if this isn't upgraded, you can't retire. Yep. Done. Sir, you're up. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna move. I am gonna hire. I'll use my key worker just to give me some flexibility for later right there. That costs two. So I pay five, get three. Um, and then I produce. So I'm going to produce three fruit, two fish, and one wheat. Um, and then I'm going to promote a guild member. Using so that's three separate types of resources. And it doesn't matter whether it's there or there. It's six and one half dozen the other. We'll put them there. All so right. receive three when receiving resources. But because that happens time, after yeah. production, right. Um, and then I cannot upgrade and I cannot retire a worker. So I'm Ooh. done. All right. So now everybody has to get ready for market day to sell stuff. You must sell a minimum of one, remember? I think we do that. I'm debating, hold on. I think so, I think it'll be worth it. All right. Oh, you uh, people suck. <laughs> it's not so good for me. Either. No, not all so right. much. All right, so we all have our things. So now it's Martin, you can either sell, or I'm sorry, yeah, you can sell or take a guild action. <laughs> it makes sense, I'm, it's a plentiful season for fruit, right? So right, yeah, I think I'm gonna sense. sell the fruit. So it'll be uh, three. Three yes, quid. Yes, sir. Three uh, quid for that. And uh, yeah, there's a kind of Monty Python esque um, thing to the fruit. <laughs> but you'll have to, uh, somebody will have to no nominate what that is on the chat. Four bucks. This goes up, right? Uh, yeah, it does. Thank you. Yes. Correct. Not that it matters. Right. It does not change things as far as you're concerned, but yeah. And hopefully you guys can still see all our money and our resources, but the screen is minimized to a point to where we cannot have that. Sorry. Okay, so I'm only getting a dollar for my fruit. Um, I think that means, and it's going to happen regardless of what I do, so I'm going to take my guild action. You are red. I'm red, which is going to be to sponsor a guild member with a fruit and a fish. I'm going to take this guy and bring him down there. Mm. Trade one resource. Uh, welcome to as an apprentice of the Guild of Master Craftsmen. Trade one resource for one luxury upon sponsorship. Do you wish to trade in? And oh, I, I want sponsorship. Right. Hold take on. I want to make sure, though, that uh, that happens yes. immediately, right? I think it does. So upon sponsorship, yep. Yeah, immediately they do. Yep. I take it's it a one-off opportunity. Do you mind if I go back? No, nope, go for it. No. So fine. I am no going to do a guild. I don't want to lose that benefit, even though I like that guild. I 
Now, you can hire a worker directly into a village? No. You have to move into a village. Into a, you know, uh, you cannot hire directly into a village. That's that would be what a, I thought. Uh, that would be a uh, cheat. Hiring straight in for Got a, it. a buck or two. All yeah. right, so I'm definitely going to sponsor a guild member, probably with that guy, unless I choose to go down to the key worker. Oh, why not? I'll head down there. Okay, so you paid your... I paid my fish and my fruit. All right, so you no longer have to pay for that dude. Yep. All right, so that's your guild action. Mr. Fowler. I can uh, wait to sell my wheat, so I'll go for the guild action instead. I will use a wheat and a fruit to uh, sponsor <laughs> another um, thing. I will go for the Settle Village for two That's options. pretty good, too. I thought that was quite a nice I thought thing. they were all pretty good. I thought it was a pretty good mix that, yeah. mm. that shows uh, before we stream. Um, so for me, uh, so hold on, Martin, that was your guild action. That's true. Uh, I'm it going was. to take my guild action because I've sold everything, so I must. So now that we have this in front of us, so if you guys will commit that to memory, we will take a look. Now, let's see, sponsor, that's probably going to happen. I cannot promote, cannot retire. Uh, I'm not going to buy any resources and I'm not gonna take gold. So ergo, we're going to sponsor, it's going to be two resources. So we will go ahead and take those two, that seems to make the most sense. So we'll throw out a sheep and a cabbage, so that's kind of like a stew, if you will. Sure, mm. uh, it's better than my fruit and fish combo. Yeah, fruit and fish can, can go well together. Uh, so, now it's a question of what do we want? Can get five bucks, eh. Leaning towards the Master Craftsman. Um, new workers being cheap is really nice as well. Settling in a village is really nice. Uh, but you know what, I think we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I need to turn in two resources. So looking at what's coming up, square fruit aren't going to be worth anything, so round kinda sucks is basically what that comes down to for this round. So I think I will go ahead, I will get rid of that and that. So I'm going to have a sheep and fruit to pay for that. Now I get to trade in one resource and I will go ahead and trade in mm. I'm going to go ahead and trade this in for a luxury item. A little carafe of vino. Very nice. Very, very nice. Mm. Done. So that is here. So now we go to Ariel again. All right. I was late to market, so I only get one gold for my fruit. Hey, Chad. I'm also late to market, but fortunately, wheat is patient. So I get three. <laughs> <laughs> my fruit's rotten, though. All right. So I'm passing. Pass. Pass. All right, so now we go to end of season, adjust the market prices. So you'll notice, oh, go for it. Done, all right. Then uh, remove the season markers. Now we remove these, so these actually go away. We flip these over to know what's going to happen in next, next spring. spring. It'll be a bit fallow in the wheat fields, mm. it appears. Then uh, pay or remove your workers. So blue. I have to pay two for my workers because I have free one key. Free is that and Ariel, that one's free. I'll pay four. So I owe six, but you know what? Um, round wheat looks pretty good and sheep looks pretty good. I think we'll go ahead and uh, say thank you, but your services are no longer needed. And now do we go ahead we will. I'll pay the four bucks to keep the others. So there we go. All right. New player order. So who has the fewest workers? Me and Martin. And Martin leads here. So might as well just do like so. So there, there, and there. Farming. 
All right, you're new up. season. So it's interesting that the game start, started very different to uh, the practice oh, I, game. I, I, I was wondering about that too, did actually. I, did I pay twice? I think you did, because why else would you have given the fruit and the sheep the first time? Yeah, good point. Thank you. All right. This is well, this is why it's so awesome having the peanut gallery in yeah. that regard. I was like, wow, I thought I had a lot more resources. But I think the first time, when we, we did go. our practice game, we didn't do that initial farmhouse cost. And as a result, we had five resources uh -huh. going into the first round instead of three, and right. that makes a big difference. Absolutely. Um, and um, that's and that kind of I, I felt thrown off a little bit because we had much less resources to work with early ah, on, all right. and that would have been it. Thanks, Eric. So that was, appreciate it. That's where the practice game can actually hurt you if you get it wrong. <laughs> um, but there we are. I wasn't a part of that practice game. He wasn't, no. He was uh, He was doing other more important things. I can't remember what they were, but they were clearly more important. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, okay, so it's the same routine. Moving workers and hiring one. So I'm definitely going to move into a village, since um, it's only going to cost me two to move into a village. The question is, which one do I want to move into? Now, wheat is I'm nicely close to the circular wheats. Um, of course, that's likely to be popular is wheat, so that's... But I am first in turn order, which is kind of handy if it's going to be popular. Um, Keep in mind, it's really easy to... Uh, uh, I guess that would be armchair quarterback on our on our <laughs> on our decisions. Well, so, I'd also I really wanted another guild position. There you and go. I would not have had that. So careful on the should have aspect of that. So yes, as well as the fact that it's way easier to, to look at this when you're on uh, watching the stream than yeah, the yeah. And like I said, it's yourself. easier to armchair quarterback, right? And I like I have a cash a way to get cash, so I wasn't right. that concerned about it. There you go. So the question is, which of my folks am I going to move in, and where am I going to do on my other moves? Do I want to put try? I could try and get two um, meeples onto the circular wheat. Is that overdoing the wheat? Um, it will give me a lot of wheat. The problem, of course, with that as well is that it also limits me a bit of flexibility in terms of variety of goods. And there's a lot of things here that are, are about getting variety of things, particularly since I want to try and get up this track to get to this rather um, nice spot and I've got some competition. So I think I don't want to go for two circular wheat, so I'm going to go for a one of those circular wheat, in which case the logical one would be this one here, um, which implies this is the one that should move into the center spot. So one, two to move into the center, and then two because it is the center to settle in there. And normally it's five, but because of that guild, yep. there you go. Then another one to move him into here. And Rather then I'm going to spend yeah. Yeah. two yep. to um, yeah. Better drop in theory. another meeple onto the board. So where do I want to be? Well, cabbages are going to be hot stuff next year. So I could try and angle myself for the cabbage, and there's some open spots here next to cabbage that could be quite good. I don't want the square fruit because it does not going to produce, so it implies that I might be at the fish, but unfortunately somebody is already in the fish spot. So that's getting right next to it's going to be problematic. I've heard it's a really um, good uh, uh, secret fishing spot. Can't go square that's fish right. there because I'm next to my own person, so square fish is right out. Um, so, given that square fish is out, maybe I'll think about... I don't want square fruit, so it's probably going to be, if I'm going to go square, which I think I do want to go, it's going to be square cabbage. Which means I have these two spots, both nicely separated from everywhere Can't else. Can't go there. Can't go there, so those are your two options. Yep. yep. If I did want to run for the cabbage, that would be the way to do it. Um, and I'm not going to be first in turn order next time, so I probably will be fruitless to run for the cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> um, See, if so I, I won't worry about it. I will just sit there. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, so I'm going to sit at that position. So that does that. Um, so then produce. So I get one luxury. And yes, I, that's the normal British pronouncement for luxury is luxury. It's nothing special to Yorkshire. <laughs> um, I get the two cabbages. Uh, take care, Chip. I get three wheats. Thanks for the support, man. Have a great holiday, all right? See you uh, in a couple and that, days. That's a reasonable haul for the summer, I think. 
Then I may choose to promote a guild member, and I have resources now. No worries, Paul. I know you didn't mean it that way. I just wanted to, you know, wanted to make sure. So, that what do I fancy? I, I'm <laughs> certainly take no offense. So, so the luxury good is, is two of two of two different things. Isn't it, it? it replaces two different types resources. of resources. So correct. I could combine this with one of anything to get to the promote to, tr to do the promotion. Correct. Um, the question is, do I want to um, replace the wheat or replace the cabbage? I think I want to replace the cabbage because I'm guaranteed to sell my free wheat at the top price because I'm in first. So therefore, it's this, and who do I want to promote? That's the big question. So as I already indicated, this is kind of boring, but this is very, very interesting. This also is very interesting. Question is, do I want to make a run for the key worker to double produce, which, considering where my key worker is, could be kind of. Uh, that way, I would argue that's a triple producer. Well, yeah. Yep, okay, so I'm, I'm sure going to go with that. I, I wasn't going to say that. anything. Right. Yeah, there you go. There we are. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm red, blue, colorblind at times, so there we are. So See, that's it. That was my logical thinking. Actually Please. <laughs> At the uh, peanut gallery, tear my logic apart because hey, it's too late to. You know what's really funny is I read a comment um, the other day on a website that I won't mention by name that uh, said uh, that we 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 play in silence, and I was like, "Have you watched her? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Must be right. other, must be other people other than me. Clearly. All right. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Farming. Um, I elect to not uh, move any workers. I elect to not hire any workers, um, and so now I get to produce. So we are producing three wheat and two sheep, please. And again, remember, you are piece limited. This is important, and these scale based on the number of players. And we'll do like so. You guys, I think, can, and just let us know if you guys cannot see any of our money or um, uh, resources. Uh, all right, so we produced. Do I want to promote? So this is a, so this is dead to me right now. Like he, it's a one-off. So why don't we go ahead and promote there? So I will go ahead. It's going to require three different or a luxury in one different. But I will go ahead and do that, that, and I think that makes the most sense. So I'm going to spend those three. And then whenever I receive resources, I, I get a luxury if I trade one of those in. So that seems like it's essentially a really nice village is kind of how that works. Um, so I have promoted. I, hmm. Well, I wonder, should I upgrade? Is it too early to worry about that? I'm going to get, uh, is it too early to worry about it? The, uh, the option is because I know I'm going to get it whenever I get resources next time, I'll be able to do it next time. So maybe the internal monologue, do I consider selling that for cash right now? I don't know what the right decision is because I know that I can do this right now. But I think I'm going to elect to not upgrade my farmhouse, which means I cannot retire. Um, sorry, that's done, and now that's done. Ariel, you're up, sir. Okay, I'm going to spend one gold to move my worker from the fruit trees to the cabbage field. Um, and then I will collect my resources. I also get to collect three bucks for being a banker, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, two cabbage. Bankers always manage to make money. Yeah, who knows why? Work, That's they? right. Three and make sure and people can fish. see your stuff. Oh, um, sorry. No, no. Yeah, like oh, on the behind. Don't the thing. push it too close to your screen. Got it. That's it. All right. I cannot see anything over there, so you're perfectly fine there. Okay. Um, all right. So that was moving. I am going to choose not to hire anybody, uh, obviously, because I already produced. Then I can. Promote, but I don't think I'm going to promote. So I'm done. All right. 
Hey, last seer, do me a favor. If you're going to be around on Christmas, why don't you ask that question then for the Ask the Elephant, okay? Um, all right, so we are done here. So market day. Need to put things up for sale. So a decision must be made now. Mm. More decisions. What do we think of that, guys? Not like it's a rhetorical question on reselling that? Huh. Or is that too ambitious? Because you need money to pay for, to move and to put out new workers. That's what you're paying money for. Because I know... Hmm. Or do I just go that route and keep that? I don't know. Oh, man. Uh... I'm trying to look at some stuff. Three, I'm good with that. Or, instead, actually, do we go this route? I think that might be smarter. What if we did that? Oh, that might be good. Yeah, I think I like that idea better. Yep, final answer. Done. That's what we're going to do. Well, radio. Okay. So, Mr. Fowler, it is market day. It you is. You can either take a guild action or sell one lot. I could take a guild action, but I'm not going to. I will sell my lot. Notice I had a little choice here. Do I sell all three of my wheats? Because, of course, I'm lined up to do that quite nicely. Um, or. Oh, well, I can't sell, I wouldn't have been able to sell three anyway because your batch size is limited to two, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so Until wouldn't it's be, flipped over to the which, manor. Which I just remembered. Um, <laughs> but so my choice was, do I sell three in error because I'm not only supposed to sell two, or do I hold back one of each for putting another guild in? That could have been uh, as sold as a second lot. Now, granted... But I wouldn't, have, gotten, out, wouldn't have got the full yes. money for that. Um, so that made it a no-brainer to hold back um, two to put another guild member out. Um, but uh, I actually had an interesting decision because I'd forgotten the rule. But uh, fortunately I made it in a way that worked well with my decision, so I sell two of those for six. Well, it ain't getting cheaper. Or ain't getting better, as it were. Sell that for two bucks. And you have complete freedom. So in, by the way, in hindsight, I feel like I made the right decision then, what I just did, because everyone saw what my other decision was, right. that I kind of pantomimed what my options were. So, worked out. Here we go. So I'm going to take my guild action. Okay. I should probably stop fighting Martin for guilds, but I'm not going to yet. So I'm going to use those two. To put out a new... To put out a new person right there. To give right. me that settle in See, the village. I'm a trendsetter when it comes to who goes in the guilds. Okay, uh, well, for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. There we go. So, Martin, back to you, sir. Back to me. Well, I'm going to pay the compliment back. So, I'm going to also go into a guild and I'm going to go into the oh, uh, man. Bankers Guild and I'll take wow. the five. The little fee that I get for joining the bank. Wow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sell my sheeples. That'll be uh, six bucks. Done. All right, I'll um, you know, sell things in a random order. Sell the wheat for one. Wheat! <laughs> <coughs> Martin? Um, I'm done. Oh wait, you did that yep, already, I so you right. pass. Okay. So now for my guild action. All right, so looking at what we have here, guys, and our current status out here. So the guild, let's see. I could sponsor somebody, put them out, an option. Could promote. Uh, nope, I don't think. Ooh, 
No. Well, here's a new, hold on. Promoting. If I were to promote that, trade up the two identical resources for luxuries when receiving resources as opposed to just trading in one. A lot of luxuries. That is a lot of luxuries. And I could do it. But I think I'm going to wait. So not going to do that right now. So, uh, can't retire. I'm not going to buy any resources and I'm not going to take gold. So I guess it sounds like we're going to sponsor. So it's going to take two resources. There. And... Yeah. Because I can always pull somebody off, right? Oh, that sounded bad. All right, so looking at this, uh, what do we want? For the next season, uh, round cabbage is good. Um, there is one round cabbage available. Because round wheat kind of sucks right now. So, you know what? Uh, wait, no, no, no. Sorry, that's not hiring. It's uh, guilds. Sorry. Um, so looking at the various guilds out here. Cannot choose this one. The extra five bucks is kind of interesting up here for the Guild of Bankers. Max Worker being cheap could potentially be nice. Mm. Getting an extra resource every turn of either the round specifically, or not round, but the type of resource, which... I'm thinking we maybe we come here. Extra resources are always nice. Money. Ah. Being able to hire additional workers. You know what? Final answer done. That's my guild action. Go ahead. It's all you. All Mark right. And I pass. So I you will get to take both of you. Sell yours. these things for six. Here we go. And there's some really bad pun, uh, uh, puns being uh, fermenting in there, you know. Hey, it happens. Mm. It happens. <laughs> All right. So we are now end of season. So adjust the market prices. So we remove two wheat and one of everything else. Then remove the season marker. So these two go away. And flip. Hmm. All right. Then uh, pay to remove or remove your workers. So blue, you owe four or... I will pay my four. Then for me, I owe four. Hmm. I'm going to pay two. And I'm going to leave the sheeple out there. Sorry, I will remove the sheep, right? Yeah, I'll remove the sheep. Or will I? Uh, yeah, I'll remove the sheep. There we go. Done. I will pay four and keep all my dudes out there. Okay. And new turn order. Who has the fewest? Yours truly. Me, Edward. And then they're tied at three and three. Red will go. Oh, not last. That's nice. Which means... There we go. All right. New season. So autumn yeah. begins. So move my workers. Um, I think I would... That will cost me three... So it cost me four bucks to move and to uh, place another worker. And I will. There's my move. Mm. And then this, I will go ahead and put my, uh, my keeple out there just in case. So a square something makes sense. Mm. 
not fish. Brown, uh, yeah, square something makes sense. So looking at the market, I'm actually either thinking here or there, honestly, getting back to my sheep. Um, whereas square fruit also is kind of nice right now. Square fruit's good. Yeah, let's go square fruit, I think. No, wait. There, final answer, done. So that is my move and my hire. Now I can produce. Then I'll just interrupt for a glory to Rome. Okay, sure. <laughs> we be polite about my glory to Rome, but it <laughs> definitely is heartfelt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're producing. So I'm producing two sheep and I'm producing three cabbage, please. Three cabbage, two sheep. And I will turn in a cabbage immediately for a luxury, please. Thank you. Luxurious cabbage. It is glorious. It's uh, like a, uh, a red cabbage turned into a sauerkraut to have with a little applesauce, a little homemade. So that's done, done, good, okay. So we've produced, now promoting a guild member. For three different, so if we were to do that, to promote him there or promote that there. That requires four. Whew. Or we could do that to get him up there. That seems good. Being able to hire Ah, shoot. Um, you know what? Instead, I'm going to go ahead and promote that. So that'll be a total of three. So two and then a third there. So I now, new workers cost a max of two bucks and I get to repeat. So I get to hire twice, potentially. And then upgrade the farmhouse. I'm still tempted to do this, but I think I wait one more turn. I think, or do we do it now? Do we bite the bullet and do it now? Because that would be this, and it's worth 15 points. You know what, let's bite the bullet. Let's go ahead and upgrade that to there. So that is, as you saw. All right, and it's worth 15 points, so seems good. Not gonna retire any workers. <gasps> Done, there we go. All right, I was looking forward to that sheep spot, <laughs> but it's not going to work out for me. So I'm definitely moving this key worker there. That's going to cost three. I'll get three out. Now I have to move this guy because he is not legally placed right now. Oh, Gusarino, I can't answer that. I don't have any for my key worker whatsoever, but the other fellas might be able to talk about their key worker and why they're doing that. I will do that. Hey, E. When I get to make it. Okay. To make. I just saw Martin doing it. It seemed like a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so, not, that is not a general <laughs> recommendation for life. <laughs> so I either move three and get to the square fruit, or I go two to the... Weed, which I'm a little bummed out about, but that's what I'll do. So I moved two, breaks my heart. two more. I, I'm torn up about that. Mm, we can tell. <laughs> so I spent five dollars, and that's good enough. Then I will not hire anybody. Then I produce. So I produce a luxury good, two cabbage, and two wheat. Still pretty good haul right there. Yeah, not bad. Seemed pretty good. It's been an extra um, dollar though. So that's produce. Are you promoting or upgrading or retiring? Uh, yes and yes okay. and no. Okay. So, so I have to promote so first. Promoting I've sort of thought the least about. So I'm definitely going to be uh, upgrading, which I'll do with these three goods when that happens. So this is what I'm left with. Seems like probably a pretty good idea. 
Upgrading will cost you three or four items, resources. Yeah. Hey, if you guys are enjoying it, don't forget to hit the thumb down below. Appreciate it. And if you are not already a subscriber, Heavy Cardboard, hit the subscribe and little bell notification so you get notified whenever we go live. Evening, right. Eric. I'm not going to promote. Instead, I'm just going to do my manor upgrade. Okay. Welcome to the 15-point club. Thank you. All right. Not retiring anyone, I assume? I am not. All right. All right. Over to me. So, in the earlier question from... Uh, oh, and I'm sorry. I get my $3 for producing... Sorry, Martin. Well, from the early question, Gusarina, what was my strategy for the key worker? It was all about getting the key worker in here and getting up here. Um, because I reckon that way I'm going to be kind of just gushing luxury goods. Yeah. Which um, is a good thing, because gushing luxury goods is nice. So it seems. So it seems, yes. Um, so, um, movement and hiring. What is that going to be about? Now, I can only use one luxury good in any particular operation that requires luxury goods, right? You can't say, do, go up here with two luxury goods. Correct. You have to be a luxury good and something else. Correct. I'm just checking that in my mind. Okie dokie. Okay, so I have two workers out there. One's on a circle, one's on cabbage. Um, I don't think I want to finish in that position, ideally. So, I'm trying to figure what my options are. So what I'm thinking about is, uh, why not go for more luxury goods? I could slip this guy in here for a total of four money. Um, one, two, plus two for the entry, because I'm still in the Settle for Village for two option. Um, then if I did that, I would have to move this guy, so it would cost another two to move him to there. And then I because of my plans, would need to put one more down. Um, so that would require one, two, three. So that would require another five. So I've got enough money to do that. So I think that is exactly what I'm going to do. So that's, he goes in here, he goes over here, and another one comes out down there. Costs me a small fortune to do so, but I think that will be very nice. And occupying two villages, I feel, is going to be a very cruel thing to do, um, which is usually makes it a good thing. So that's my um, move. Then I produce. So I get one luxury here, one luxury here, two wheats over here, and two cabbages over here. Then promoting a guild member. I'm absolutely going to promote a guild member because I really do want to get that spot. Um, now, I could, in theory, also convert my farmhouse, but then I'd have no goods um, for the market, which would be bad. Well, it's just all, all that means is you don't make any money and you just have to, we get to see how much cash you have. Um, yeah, but I, I really, I think I can delay around on the farmhouse. I definitely want to promote because this is a really, really nice spot, I think, because I'm then going to be pumping it out. So I'm not going to upgrade, but I am going to promote. So I'll promote with this one. And then I'm not going to retire because I have no manor house because I'm still working, unlike these two <laughs> sla um, rich slackers over here. And I'm done. All right, so market day. Now I have an interesting decision. I've been trying to struggle with what to do with this. Because, remember, nothing produces except for that. Mm. Oh, that produces. How nice. <laughs> um... I th the question is so, so you're only hiring and moving workers next season but you've got to have something to sell if you're going to hmm. I think we go that route we'll look at the board real quick 
check that. That. That's the right answer. The question is that two. Done. Oh, mm. we're deciding what we're doing, aren't we? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I'm thinking about because I can't do those, I'm thinking about either doing that or that. Actually, I guess it makes sense to do this instead of that in that way. Although. Nope, I'm going to do that, so only going to do, yeah, okay, all right. All right, all right, so um, three bucks, done, hurry up. All right, um... Oh, that sucks, Chad. I'm sorry. I'm going to sponsor a new person. From here to wheat. All right. Hmm. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Sorry. I used my selling things to oh, sponsor, okay. but they're identical. The, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Good catch. All right, Martin? Hmm. Well, I can sell my wine at any time because nobody else is rushing, so I might as well do my um, action. And I, when I bike into action, I was definitely thinking of um, going putting another guild person out because I hold back these ready for it. I was actually going to go there for the highly strategic reason that no one else had gone there, so I thought I'd go there to see what it was like. Uh, agriculture, yeah. Yeah. But now somebody's took one gone for the there. team. Is it, uh, do I still want to do that, or do I still want to do something else? Um, there's no point doing this, because I haven't got a spare thing to trade for luxury goods. And anyway, I've got so many luxury goods that, <laughs> you know, I'm not even going to need to trade for them. Um, new workers? That could be kind of interesting, particularly if I can push up, because that allows you to boost your workers out faster um, in the new year. Um... How much do I want to keep my workers out is also one of the things I'm thinking about. Um, I will have um, six, seven money, which will be enough to pay for the workers that are out there. I might want to keep them out during the winter, which is expensive, but gives me a fast run at the, uh, the new season, which is kind of nice. Yep. Um, and if I do that, then maybe I want to go to one of these other ones. But I'm, a, I'm in all the other ones. So maybe I will go to horticulture anyway. Which bit of horticulture do I fancy? Cabbages agriculture. or agriculture? Does it say agriculture? It, it does. Oh, yeah, it does. It's just, this looks like an H from this angle. Yeah, it looks, I, I, like, it it looks like an H from here, yeah. too. So, But I know how yeah, to spell it's agriculture. agriculture. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm just bitter about him having this plus that. So oh, that is yeah, pretty good. I, yeah. yeah, I definitely uh, was cruel on that one. Um, so yeah, so fruit or cabbage? Well, given the choice in life between fruit or cabbage, I think I'll go for fruit. And on no better basis than that, I will drop one down on the fruit thing here. All right. So that was here. Yep. I have nothing to sell, so I'm going to stick to my schedule. And I'm going to go ahead and take gold. Five minus two, three bucks. So I'll turn in two, take a five. Done. That's my guild action. Uh, go ahead and, uh, you guys can go ahead and sell your stuff because you've yep. already taken so it's all right. Four so bucks. Four bucks. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. Yep. Goes on the thing. Oh, it does matter, too. There we and go. It will matter, yes. That's all right. right. So you guys got your money? Yep. Yep. All right, so end of season, adjust the market prices. Done. There we go. All right, remove the season markers. These go away. Mm. 
I'm really glad about that, not gonna lie. Uh, all right, so now, pay to remove your workers. <sighs> okay. Or pay to keep them, I, I should mm. say. Um, I get to place two. Hmm. I'll pay no money. And ensure I'm probably going first. And by probably, I mean I'm going to, because they're both going to keep their village guys out there. I know that. Hmm. I'll take that finished. guy off and pay nothing. Okay, and Martin? Do I go all out? Certainly I want to keep the two village guys out, because they will actually produce in the winter. Um, and... So the question is, do I want to keep two of them out and be really profligate with my workers? Or do I want to send both of them home or keep one handy? I do like the idea of coming fast out the gate in the new year, so I'm just going to pull one of them back. I'm going to pull this one Christmas back. Day is the SDL. And that will cost me four. And Christopher says, eh, agriculture is horticulture of tasty plants. Fair point. All right. Okay, all right, so uh, now we uh, turn order. Um, I have zero workers. I choose to go first. Uh, then red and blue. And that does not change because we didn't have to use any of the tiebreakers. All right, farming, here we go. Um, move, I have no workers. I will go ahead and hire. Will I? Well, hold on, I'm going to have to. So if I hire now, though, I will have to pay upkeep for them because they're not going to produce anything. So do I hire? But I would have potentially four people out there. For eight bucks. I think I still do. So I'm gonna pay four bucks. Yeah, and place two workers out there. So I will go ahead, plus I'm first to do so, so it kind of makes sense to do it. So there's going to be one. And then the second one, so now that we have fruit locked down, I don't want sheep or wheat. Fish seems good. Square fish. You wouldn't be able to go there anyway. Yeah, let's do that. That'll do. So that's going to be new worker is two bucks. Repeat the higher action once is two bucks. Done. For that, uh, no produce. I choose not to promote. I already upgraded and choosing not to retire. Done. I'm going to spend one. Go there. Oh, wait a minute. I get two bucks back. The first tire's free. I get ah. three bucks back. So the first one was free, and the second one was a buck. Was one. That's right. There you go. Max of two. There we go. I caught it. I caught it. I caught it. I caught it. Here we go. And that's why I do that in winter. Because now it'll cost me four bucks total, so five instead of eight. There we go. Um, oh, yeah, I have other things. I'm not doing my other things. That's why I was uh, not you doing Yeah, but you have you produce. I do want to produce. Production's good. I get one have to produce, of these, so yes. and I get three bucks. Oh, is that just for resources? It's just resources, so I don't get three bucks. I just get that. Correct. Um, then promote, I've, upgrade, retire. Well, promote or retire. Um, nope, I'm all set. Thank you. All right. Martin. So, I'm tempted to, uh, I, I can spend all my free money to put one out, maybe, maybe I should have kept them, now I'd have to roll for two. I've got to pay for them when they're out there as well, if mm -hmm. I did want to put another one out, so maybe I'm happy where I am actually, just... So not going to move, I am. not going to hire? Yep, and I'll just produce my um, one, two, three, four luxury goods. That's so gross. That's so gross. Uh, all right, are you promoting, upgrading, retiring? Um, I've got nothing to match with my luxury goods, so I can't, unfortunately, do any um, of the other actions. All right. You have to put something up for sale. I do. 
question is how much? So Ariel's got one luxury good. If he pops it up for sale, which he probably will, um, he'll uh, get five. So I could get seven and oh, whatever. All right. All right, so for the market day, I could get three more dollars or I could purchase some items, possibly. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and sell my sheep for three bucks right now. So I will take a five, turn into done. All right, five bucks for my luxury item. There's no rush. I don't want to do anything else. So I'm stuck on things like promotion. I could sponsor, of course, and throw yet another apprentice into the uh, world. You have one worker left. I Plus do. you have these guys out here Which that I you can move. always... Yes. Right. Correct. Um, I think I've probably got enough people out in the guilds. I'm not sure that I want to put anybody else out. I'm not in a position to retire. I don't really want to do any buying. Oh, I could take gold, couldn't I? Although I'd only get a couple for it, but I would go to the front of a turn order. Hmm. Um, but I can do that next round, can't I? So I'll just sell these for seven. Uh, I'm sorry? Should be eight, shouldn't it? Oh yes, quite right. It's eight because it's the first one, isn't it? So I'll happily take eight. Well... I think it, it, that worked out. So I'm going to buy for my action. I'm going to go and buy two luxury. I think it. I think so. Because I'm going to be able to produce. A bunch of different items there. I think I. I think so. Yeah. Um. I'll spend the six bucks to get two luxury items. That's my, uh, that's here. Ariel? I'm going to take gold, so I get f five minus two, which is three, and I bump up the favor track for, I don't know, getting bribed, I guess. I think I forgot to move that when I did that earlier. Oh, you, I think you may have already been at the top. No, I no. because I literally did it last turn, right? Because I took it, so technically it should be here. Okay. There you go. Because then you will have bumped me down, so there you go. Yeah. Well, I'm going to bump up anyway. Let's get two. <laughs> for mine. So, I took money. Okay, we've all taken our guild action, so now, here we go. Who has the fewest workers? Me and Ariel. Ariel has this, so there. So it'll go there, 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 and red. Go. Farm. Farm, okay. Oh, wait, end of the season, right? Um, yes. Yeah, we have to adjust prices and whatnot. Yeah, sorry. So these three come off, that's it. Don't remove any season, uh, now we have to pay upkeep also. I apologize, yep. sorry, I got ahead of myself. So I'm paying... Two bucks. Two bucks. Ooh, I forgot about this step. That was the reason I didn't want to do that. Bye, Set Dragon. We won't miss your bad jokes in one slightest bit, honest. All right, <laughs> take care. Oh, I have those where I want them. I screwed that up. Okay, I'll pay the four bucks. Oh, I'm not playing well. Okay, done. Now, Ariel, take your uh, your farming actions. All right, uh, let's see. I'm going to keep my key worker... He's hanging out there, that's fine. My wheat's gonna collect in the summer. I'll hire this guy for two. And then I will produce, so I get three dollars. I get uh, two for this guy because of that guild. So I get two wheat, three fruit. These really look like pumpkins to me. But they do. They're they fruit. Do. Well, technically are no, I guess those are squash. So, yeah, never. I guess they have they have seeds, right? And right. The, and a luxury good. Those will go back here. And then promote upgrade or promote or in retire. Uh, promote and retire. Where are we? Yeah, I think it's time to do that. So, I will promote that dude up there. 
for that, which is two, and one and one, and then I will uh, spend nine to retire. Correct, uh, now, do I, I can retire from here? No, it has no, to be from the board. No, they have to be active. Those guys aren't worth retiring because yeah. they're, you know, they're, Got they're loafers anyways. Well, this guy did his job, so he can now go enjoy my manor house Okay. for nine bucks. For that. And you're done? So net six. Yep. Martin. You next. No, just me. Sorry. Uh, not moving, not hiring, so I'll produce. So it's going to be, I need three pumpkins, <laughs> three fruit, and uh, two fish, please. So now, when doing that, I will go ahead and get another luxury for that. So we can promote, retire, etc. I am not in a oof. All right. That's tempting to promote that. You know what? That's if we're producing a ton, are we going to be able to, in addition to everything else, I guess we know what our, our goal in life is to be able to do, so we will. So I will there and not going to retire anybody done okay I'm not going to move anybody but I am going to hire so it's going to cost me three I'm going to hire somebody. I don't have very many spots. These are the only three spots I can go because all of that's blocked off. All of that's blocked off because of the center person. I'm, this I'm torn up needs. about it, man. Yep, so it's going to be here. It's totally wrecked. Um, then I produce. So I produce one, two, three luxuries from, here, from my overproducing key worker plus one there. And I get two fruit plus an extra one for that there, which is three fruit. And two fishy wishes. I think it was a good teach, at least, because I'm going to get hammered. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a fair amount of stuff here. So one of the things I really need to do is upgrade my farmhouse. So that will cost me a fruit, an halibut, an halibut, and a, ma and a uh, one of my very few luxury goods. There's that no will need. Upgrade. There's no need. Oh, with promoting a guild member as well. So te technically, I should have done that first. Um, so, do I want to promote? I don't think this is really terrible. Well, I'm, that's I'm done. Can't go up there. Um, this doesn't feel terribly interesting at this point because I'm not going to move. I can't move, so the movement is of no use. The only question is, do I want to try and get up to the very top? I could get here and get a bit more money. I think money's going to be less of an issue to me because, if nothing else, I've got a lot, a lot of luxury goods to sell. So I'm kind of interested in this one. So I'll spend a luxury good and a fruit and go up one on this track there. So that's my promotions done. And um, I could actually, ooh, I could even consider retiring. So we can retire only one. Oh, no, you can potentially retire two workers in a no, row. No, it's one. Well, one in farming, one in market. One in right. farming, one in market. So I'm just wondering, do I start cracking on the retiring now? It would mean I wouldn't be able to do any more promotions on the market day. I certainly wouldn't be able to retire on the market day. Um, do I do it now or do I take the gold action? I think I might as well just do it now, I think. So I'm going to do that. So that's going to be um, four resources. One luxury good plus two other items. And I think 
this one, because I'm already in the villages, so I don't really care about settling in the villages, can be retired. Where did he come from? From there. I oh, gotcha. All right. Yep. And live a life of luxury. Luxury. Done. Building Chateau de Chatelet. All right, Red. Uh, or right, here. Uh, get your items to sell. I think we're. I think we're gonna do this. Yeah, I'm going to roll the proverbial dice on this. All right. Well, that worked out. Not terrible. Hmm. Okay. okay. Twice total, Chad. So we're we're uh, three quarters of the way through the game here. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna sell my uh, my fruit first. Four, six. All right, I will sell my luxuries for 10. Uh, I got it. Okay. So I'm in no rush to sell my luxuries, but I don't really have any interesting guild action to take because I've already done my retirement. So I'm gonna sell my luxuries. Um, I can sell in a free because I'm in the manor house now, so it'll be 12. Yep. On one goes. Oh, yeah, one goes on there. Sorry. Okay. Ariel? Um, I'll sell my wheat for three. And I will sell my fish. Or three as well. So I'll take a five, put back two. Okay. Martin? Um, I will take gold, I guess. Not really much else I can do. I only get one gold for it, but I don't think I have any other options. So that'll be and good. you are already at the top, so you are done. All right. All I'm right. also going to take gold for three, and I bump up there. Um, I'm going to two. sell my fruit for two. And, oh yeah, you're done. Then for my action, for my guild here. So, no, no, no. I could buy, or I could take gold and ensure myself being first. Is that important? Or buying resources. So looking at this, right now I'm getting one pumpkin. You know what? A moment on something. I want to check out guild number three for a second. During farming, specifically. Okay, Bye-bye, Tony. All right, take care, Tony. Merry Christmas, Ma. Um, do I... So I'm currently going to get two fish. If I do nothing, I'm getting two fish and a pumpkin. So I could get a couple of wheat. Cabbage is too expensive right now, so I'm not going to do that. Sheep, no. So it's either buy two wheat for four bucks. And then for hiring, I'll be able to hire for a total of four bucks. Leaving me that. We're in good shape for the end of the game right there. So, do we buy or do we get the three bucks? I think we buy. So I'm going to go ahead and buy two wheat, please, for a total of four. So they come off here, don't they? Yep. Thank you. And that was here. So done. So now end of season, adjust the market. And now remove season markers. So there are none and pay to remove workers, starting with red. Um, so I'll pay two. I will pay four. 
And I will pay six. And new player order. So it's going to be two and two. That will drop. You do that. And Ariel. Okay. Um, so my wheat guy is good. My luxury guy is good. I probably want to hire this last worker who's been raring to go. Where or is, loafing, depending on your point. It, of view, it, it suppose, does. Right? That's true. Uh, probably take one of those square cabbages. I think that's where I'm going. Oh, you have one option. Well, two. Oh, yeah. I three. have more than you one option. Three. I apologize. I saw this one. You can't do, but there, there, and there. Right. Yeah. My bad. Yeah, I want to go to a square. That square sheep would have been nice, but that's not going to give me anything. So maybe it's not so nice. Um. I think that's my choice. I don't want to. Well. I could get more wheat and then sell a crap load of wheat. That's interesting. Interesting idea. Well, I can sell three. So I'll be stuck with some. Four. I'd be producing six wheat. That's a lot of wheat. Three of which I would sell. Do I care about having all that wheat? Well, I could sell... Let's try it. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to go there. That costs me um, two. Correct. Two workers out there. So, yep. Now I produce. So, I'm going to produce um, two wheat. Two wheat. One luxury. One luxury. And it looks like three wheat. Four wheat. Check that. Four. And. You are red. I am red. Um, and then I can promote, if I choose, which I will do. I'm going to use a luxury and a wheat and move up here. And then are I... Are you retiring anyone? I will for nine bucks. And this guy's done his wheat job, and he will retire. All right, well done. So, done. All right, so, moving workers, I am not going to, am I? Well, I know I'm going to hire two workers for a total of four because of this. So those guys are going to come out. So first and foremost, we're going to go to round cabbage. Makes sense. So let's see. You guys are already there. Is there any? Uh, I guess it's going to go there. Um, then it's a matter of not cheap right now. What am I not producing? So there are five resources, right? So producing. Not producing, but maybe I bought some previously. Cabbage is set up. Good. I have fish. So basically that's either wheat now or, or sheep, which are not going to do me any good. So in a perfect world, we're looking for a square wheat, which there are none available. There's literally one square wheat, huh? Interesting. Okay. Oh. So... Instead, we will go a round wheat, I think, which is better than zero, and yeah. Oh, plus that's better for right now, right? Der. That makes sense. All right, so that is my hiring. The question is, am I going to move? I'm not going to move anybody. I paid for that. Produce now, so help me out here. It's going to be one fruit. It's going to be two fish. It's going to be one cabbage. And it's going to be three wheat, although make it two wheat and a luxury. And then you get one other resource of your choice. I don't. No, oh, that's not you. You're I get yellow. this instead. Okay, well, that works too. Yep. Even better. All right. So a moment while I do some figuring. All right. So now am I promoting anybody?
that would get me two extra luxuries, which the luxuries would be able to be for retiring in the last round after they produce. That makes sense. So if I were to promote, it'd be that, that, and that. Does that make sense? I think so, and I'll be able to end up retiring two workers. I think so, plus the extra five. That's a difference. Yeah, I think so. So without mathing it out too much, I will go ahead and promote there. And not going to retire anybody. Good. Martin. Okay, so I will do a little bit of movement and spend one just to move to this position because that way I'll get three wheat instead of two fruit. And as we know, fruit is better than wheat, but three wheat is better than two fruit. Hmm. The general rule. Um, and then I'll produce. So I get to produce my three luxury goods over there. Interesting discussion about one over here. I get three wheat huh. for over here. Well, it doesn't taste good, so. And two fish over well, here. That leans it away from me. Because there's a lot of sugar in it. Well, I'm just saying, pumpkin. Looks straight up amazing. pumpkin. Uh, yeah. I'll go for butternut squash. Yeah, I agree. Agree. So there's my my product my production. Promoting. I'm not sh well. This this I'm going to want to promote at some point, but I'm not sure that I want to promote him right now. Oh, he gets one of anything. So let's pick up a cabbage Indeed. just for random. Um, because of this, in this position, you get one of anything. Here, you only get one of your um, chosen. But it's more points. But for each of them. Yeah, for each of them. But I'm not got so any at like, the moment. Right. I might get more later. Um, it's really the the benefit of jumping here that I'm most interested would be the the five victory points. But it's better to retire. Now, one of the things I've got to watch is we have the doomsday of luxury goods Thank God. coming up, <laughs> um, which is a kind of scary prospect, but it basically means that's going to limit how much um, stuff I'm going to be able to do. I've got to hold on to these four luxury goods, and I think I want to focus more on retiring than I want to do anything else. It's four goods for retirement, um, so I have to put in two goods in addition to what I've got. So I am not going to do any promotion. Um, I might promote at the end of the go, but I'm not going to promote for five points if, I, if it's going to cost me a retirement for 15. Um, so I've upgraded the hard to it. Here goes the retirement. So yeah, retirement time. And where to retire from? Well, this is no longer going to be any use to me because my key, well, but my key worker may be somewhere else. But zero points. five points. Five, okay. Um, I could move this guy off on the basis that I don't know where he's going, but that's the point. He may go somewhere useful. I've got no one here. The other option is here. He's only doing five points. I think I'm going to take him. Uh, all right, done. All right, put up what you're putting up for sale. And you have to put something up for sale. You, it, actually you must. Martin has change. things, so. A moment. Oh, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> As you recall, I made six of those. That hurt. All right. Yeah. I'm going to sell. Oh, okay. Excellent choice. That would be 12 bucks. Six. Well, I might as well sell mine for two. I wasn't actually that interested in the money. Just the fact that you have to sell something. And it wasn't going to be one of my luxury goods. All right. So now... Now I have to take my guild action. The question is, retire now or retire later? I think I would prefer to retire later. I don't think I'm going to be able to retire twice. Or I could retire twice next round if I am able to work that out for myself. 
So. Did you put yours here, Martin? Oh, I, I don't, don't think you did. Yes, I did not. Keep forgetting. Do, to do I? That. I guess you haven't noticed. Buy something. I'm thinking I don't need to buy variety because I can move this guy. Um, because that's not going to produce anything. That'll get me enough variety to bump up one. So probably the best thing to do is just get cash. I. Uh, and then I get the tiebreaker unless other people take cash, which they probably will. I'll um, I'll take cash, three bucks. And I bump up here. Okay, so working my way through my thoughts now. Uh, not going to sponsor anybody. Doesn't make sense. Not going to promote anybody. Not going to retire anybody. Buying or taking gold. Taking gold gets me a buck. Whereas buying, I would lose two bucks. Potentially if I bought wheat. Or I could just buy one wheat. I need I need a total of eight bucks. Oh. I need eight to keep everybody out there. And I need ten to be able to hire one more. I'll take a buck there and yep Martin well I'm going to retire okay and the only question is whom do I retire um, I think it's going to be one on the farm I think I'm going to retire this one I think that will give me enough firepower for the last go all right so adjust the market please we go. And pay to remove. I'm paying eight bucks. Keep mine out there. I'm paying two. I'm paying. Why are you paying eight bucks? I have four. Oh, yeah, people. you got four. I couldn't see that because it was yellow on yellow, heavily camouflaged. Okay, <laughs> I'm paying four for my two non key. Once. There and then I like that. there we go. Here we go. Last uh, two thirds of a round. Here we awesome. go. Ariel. Oh, but I'm out of people. I thought I could hire somebody, but I cannot. I have too many retirees. Okay. <laughs> can I hire from just? I don't know if I want to do it. Could I hire from a guild? I believe you can, but let me know if you want to. I don't think I want to, but that may change how I move here. Because what I'd really like to do is bump up one yes, more space. Yes, you can. But I bump up a space to gain five, and to do that, losing five. Yes, that you can make retire more than three, but only two in a given right. season. So, I think what I have to do is move off of that. When, for this, when any one additional resource, it doesn't have to be one that I'm it's on. during farming, correct, yes. Well, that's helpful. Okay, so that sheep's only going to get me one, but maybe I live with that. So I don't want to be on this wheat spot anymore. I could go to the fruit. Fruit gets you selling fruit. first. That's kind of nice. Um, I'm going to go to the fruit, so that costs one. And then, so if I go up there, this guy, he's really limited to moving up here which is good enough. He'll move there. That costs two. And not hiring, I take it? I cannot hire. I've got too many old people on my farm. Uh, produce? Um, I will now produce. So I get two fruit, a single sheep, and one other good, which just has to be... One other resource. One other resource, which is fine. It's going to be a cabbage. And promoter upgrade? I'm sorry, promoter retire? Uh, yes and yes. So, interesting. So if I do that's pretty good. Okay. So 
I'm going to promote using three different goods. One of these fives to a 10, does it matter which one? It doesn't. Yeah. I'll do that and then I will pay nine bucks to retire. Good work, key worker. Okay, so for me, this is awesome. I need to get my uh, my workers out of the um, cushy village life, get them onto the onto the um, farmlands. It's kind of cultural revolution out here. Um, so you can go there and be a shepherd. You can go there and do fruit trees. So it will give me two sheep, two fruits. Two elements and a veggie just as a mix. And then retire. I can't promote easily. Um, so I would need four different things. That's going to wreck my ability. That would wreck my ability to um, retire. So I want to focus on retirement. So it's going to be a uh, retirement. And I'm going to pull one of these. Now, Edward's going to move. Is there what, does any of these pulls going to be more awkward for him? I can't figure that out, so I'll just pull that one and retire. Yes, Paul, that's what those little partial circles are for. It's not the best iconography, but that's the idea. That, that means there's more than one. I think and I'm that's a bunch me. short from what I want to do. Um, so I can either hire or move are my options. So, what am I not producing right now? I'm not producing sheep. So, So right now, if I do nothing, I'm getting... Do me a favor. Grab yeah. me a pumpkin, a two fish, three cabbage, and a wheat. You guys are producing lots of goods. So then I could turn in two of these, which would be those two for luxury, if you would, please. For okay. how many luxuries? Two. Two because of that. Yeah, makes sense. So now I need to look at this. So I'm just going to make a new line down below that I haven't acquired yet. That's if I change nothing, this is what I have. So I could do away with the one wheat and move it to get two sheep. The other option is I could get one sheep. I, uh, I'm in a, just a crappy position right now. I think I'm a buck short to be able to do everything I want. So the question is, do I get one sheep? Or do I get two sheep and I do away with the wheat? I think I do away with the wheat. So I will do this for a buck. So I'll put back that, and I will get two sheep in lieu of that. There. Then I could move one other thing if I wanted, but I don't think I want to. No. So that's it. That's done. So now... Do I want to retire is the question. Well, if I do this, that gives me 15. One, two, three, four. But if I don't, then I need to be able to get that for 25. So I don't think we retire anybody. Do we really? Oh because I need to be able to buy, and that's that's rough. I am one resource short. You guys can see what I'm talking about for retiring and being able to have that. 
and the fact that you can only buy identical and I need to have something to sell so instead I think we keep it there and we don't retire anybody okay so done Whoop. all right so market day so now a moment it's gonna take me a second guys so relax I'm excited about my sale. if I sell this and then I buy that I still can't retire so if I can't retire I might as well sell that right Because I have to be able to buy for that. So yeah, there you go. Final answer. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, Ariel, it's sell or guild action. I will sell for three. Martin. I will sell my two fishes for six. And no, I did remember to put the thing on. The you thing. did. Wasn't that good of me? Well, I will sell my luxuries for three apiece for six. Okay. It's me again. I will retire for nine bucks. I should have done that, Brianna. Doesn't matter what order I think, I will do another retirement. Uh, I'll sell, uh, I'll sell my fish for two bucks. And Ariel? I will pass. I'll sell my sheep for six bucks. One of these days. Yep. You I'll got it once right. I got it once. That was enough. <laughs> right. Not that it's going right. to make any difference. Of course. And then... This kills me, but I will spend two bucks to buy a wheat. All right. So that's it. We go into final scoring. So let me bring up the final scoring. All right. So we can actually clear all of this off now. What's that? It's both sides, right? It's it both sides. Oh. Didn't know that was there. We didn't use that the previous time. Is it all in your head? There we go. Markers up there. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take last. I'll go ahead and bust mine out here real quick. So, Manor House. That's going to be 15 for yellow. But you know what? All of us got it. So, 15 for everybody. Woo. Okay. Yep. So, then after that, retired workers. I'm done. Ariel? Uh, four. So 60, 75. 75, thank you. Five. Man. No, I'm sorry, that's 75 for, uh, sorry, that's 90 for Martin. Yep. Uh, gold, I have seven. So you're at 22? Uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll yeah. count mine yep. later then. Okay, go ahead, guys. Might as well lose the screens. Martin? I've got another 20. 20, I have zero. To 110, okay. Uh, pairs of resources, luxury. So mine, I get 50. Mm. Okay, so, so that's 65. 65. And then another seven for and 72. Plus seven, okay. And that's all of those. I had one pair for five, so I'm 80. Uh, then guild members. So here, we'll do Martin, 10, 15. 15, so that would be 125. Uh, 10, 15, 25, 40. 40, that would be 120. Uh, that would be uh, 15, 87. Uh, yep, there we go. Martin hangs on, 125, Ariel 120, amazing teacher. Mmm, shockingly good. All right, there we go. Yeah, speckled trout, I like it, or, you know, yeah. There we go, all right. 
So start with the uh, winner. Go ahead. <laughs> well, um, second play to uh, after my first play with a practice game, I wasn't quite sure about it. I was feeling there's a lot of nice little mechanisms in here. Um, the market I felt wasn't really that dynamic. How excited am I by it? Second play definitely improved. The market is still a bit sclerotic. It's not as dynamic as I'd like it, a market to be. Um, but um, you know, most of the goods weren't that different in price and there wasn't that much movement going on, but there was a little bit at least, mm -hmm. but it wasn't mm -hmm. huge. The, I like the variety that you get from the guilds. Um, I mean, the thing I did the first game was totally different to what I did this game because you're just playing the guilds differently and that's obviously very crucial. I like the fact that you've got to do this maneuvering around on here. Um, it's a nice mix and in a nice weight. Yesterday we were playing Crystal Palace and um, just a game day and just right. a game yeah. day and i ended up feeling that it was really too complicated for what i was getting out of it um now that was the first play and sometimes after a couple of plays you change your mind um here this i think has the balance about right it's about the right kind of complexity to what i'm coming back from and i'm i'm feeling very positive about this i, I could imagine get buying it okay and for those that were asking about the two-player version, um, the the favor board doesn't happen. You just flip flop if tied first second. Um, the game plays pretty similar. There's less boards. There's less guilds, yep. so it scales pretty well. So two, three, or four. Aaron, I love this game. I I think it's really fun. Um, and there, I mean, I agree with Martin. The market's not super dynamic. There's some player interaction, not a ton, but what player interaction there is, is, is pretty good. And it just does a lot of things really well. So this is like what I'm looking for in a Euro. Um, mm -hmm. And something about it's just a lot of fun. And, and there are a lot of different strategies. Like my game was interesting. So I decided to go the banker strategy, which I think worked pretty well, but I was only getting six points for every retired worker because I was spending nine. So those oh, sorts of dollars, yeah. yeah. Six. yeah so right. those sorts of decisions are interesting, and it, it's just a really good time. I agree. Like it's you know solidly medium weight, so it, mm -hmm. you know you can break it out in an evening, no problem. Um, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I I mean I wanted this reprinted uh, mm -hmm. for selfish reasons because I wanted a copy and I did, wasn't willing to spend two hundred bucks on it. Uh, but I think. The fact that, and let me see the stack of guild. We didn't show this to folks, but uh, yeah, here. Those are all the guilds that we didn't play with tonight. Mm. So you can see the amount of variety that, that and, and, and there's the fourth board, and all of these are double sided as well. So there's a ton of replayability, there's different strategies, which obviously I have not grokked yet. Uh, as far as what guilds are in play, the it's just it's it's tight, it's clean, it feels good. Um, yeah, this is I think it's it it punches above its weight. It's low rule low rules overhead. Um, you're it's it's a bit repetitious because you're doing the same thing essentially eight times. Mm, right. So there's no emergent gameplay in, yeah. in in those regards. It's just a matter of. It's an engine builder, right? Like, okay, what I'm doing, I'm now doing better, working towards this end result. And as long as you're okay uh, with there being no emergent gameplay, this isn't. This game doesn't try and do that, obviously. And I think what it does try and do is create a very good resource conversion engine builder. And I think it does a marvelous job of mm -hmm. that. And it feels just feels enjoyable yeah, playing it's just it, fun. right? It's it's just, it hits the right spot that I would want for a midweight Euro. This is, you know, the to put in line with, like, what we've played recently, the Yin Yang, Yin yep. Yang, whatever. Quebec, yeah. uh, Quebec is up there, um, Rococo. Um, so, yeah, for a solid midweight Euro, I really, really like this. Plus, um, I like the key series in mm. general. There are exceptions to that, but... Uh, yeah, I think this game plays wonderful. And it's not it a multi-solitaire because you've got the interaction on the oh, yeah. tracks and, on, though, and yeah. on here. Even though there really wasn't kind of bumping around. a whole lot up there, um, I think I enjoy it more at four. 
Uh -huh. Even though there's more worker placement spots, there's more guilds, it just kind of feels a little bit tighter than three. If you were to put a gun to my head, I would say I think I like it more at two and four. Uh -huh. But it scales mm. incrementally, so I think that's just a personal preference thing. But it, I think it plays well at all three player counts, having played it at all of them. Yeah. Um, but overall, I think it's just a really good game. I'm glad it got reprinted. And then the one issue I'd heard with the game is that certain actions are overpowered. So I think they tried to fix that with... Oh, in the first edition? Yeah. Okay. So I was actually, I was hoping, um, I was hoping that Edward or I would take out Martin's uh, luxury strategy, because I think that's one of those strategies that people thought was overpowered, and I think they changed the weight up. It, it didn't seem... It you, wasn't you crazy. Close, it wasn't so. crazy, but that, I mean, there are some things that are stronger than other things, and the longer this game's out, those things are going to mm. emerge. Um, but I think there are enough boards to sort of fend that off. Yeah, I don't know what would have happened had there not been a uh, doomsday um, crash of the wine market in the, in but the it's, very last But it's going to happen really. at some point. Yes, and that's the thing. It would have maybe hurt, helped hurt it, it, earlier on, and it would have exactly. been more of an impact yeah, right. yeah. had it been yeah, earlier yeah. on. Right. Because then I would have been, oh, do I move out of villages and then risk somebody else nipping in there? Yeah. Or do I... But then, do I do? then it becomes, okay, if... Well, obviously, we don't have enough experience with this to be able to say definitively, but I will say this. Now that we have seen that, and we know what tiles, as far as the seasons, mm. if that if that wine tile or the luxury comes out early and somebody tries to hammer up the key worker uh, guild, then collectively we know, okay, we need to stop that. We yeah. need to nip that in the bud as best we can. So then... Then it becomes a game of I know what you're trying to do. Now I'm I'm not trying to focus on this. Right. I'm trying to actively get in your way while also exactly. helping myself. Right. And so it becomes more of a meta, which I'm down with as well as you right. learn yeah. the game. And there are there are only three in a, in a three player game. There's only three luxury spots. So you know I I think Martin worst case wouldn't have gotten any. So you can he went for that strategy really early. He was in the key, and if we had more experience, we probably could have seen what he was going to do right. and just jumped in those spots. Right. So there's, again, experience matters, but yeah. yeah mm. But to every, you know, OP strategy, there's a counter. Right. Don't yep. let that happen. Right. right? Sure. But, and it wasn't that OP as it turned out. I mean, yeah. No. Only five you're right. It seems right. like it got right. balanced pretty well. Yeah. No. Say, I think so. Right. So. So there you go. All right. That is key market, y'all. Thanks everybody for uh, hanging with us tonight. Everybody have a great holiday season. I will be back on Christmas Day at 2 p.m. Eastern for Nasty the Elephant because, honestly, i uh, spend some time with you guys. So I don't have any family or anything like that I'm spending time with. So I figure I would spend a couple hours with y'all here. Then after that, we're going to put the show to bed for... A week to a week and a half, depending on when the new PTZ camera gets here. The later on, it's supposed to get here by New Year's Eve. Uh, if it gets here then, then we probably might not go live until around the 6th, so we might have a bit of a break right there. Uh, a couple of other programming notes. Christmas night, we will have the top 50 of all time of right now of me, Jess, and Martin's top 20. It's the three of us uh, tag teamed on that episode. Speaking of podcast, if you guys are interested, you can go check out uh, the interview that I sat for with Ben Maddox of Five Games for Doomsday. I highly recommend it. I think it was pretty yes, interesting. Yes, I've listened to it as well. Very, very interesting to, to listen to. So check that out if you're so inclined. Five Games for Doomsday. Just Google it. Uh, other than that, uh, like I said, the podcast will release Christmas night for all y'all traveling home from the holidays. Other than that, I will see you guys Christmas Day, and then I will catch you sometime in the first week of January. You guys got anything else? Nope. All no, right. Just Merry Christmas and yep. a Happy New Year. Yeah, all of that. So, uh, yeah, happy holidays everywhere, or everybody. And thanks again to everybody who chooses to support the show, whether it's watching, whether it's uh, spreading the word, whether it's listening to the podcast, or going over to pledgehc.com, supporting the show there. I really, really appreciate it. I'm Edward. Ariel. And I'm Martin. All right, you guys take care. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Otherwise, catch you all next year. Merry Christmas, y'all. Oof, that was rough for me. But it was a good teach. But it, yeah. I, I'm okay mm. with that, right, overall. All right, good stuff. <laughs>